Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today the third section in the series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. This, the third in the series, is entitled What Are Devils? Devils, which are minions of Satan, are not like human beings. Like Satan, they do not have souls. They are a form of animal that is very predacious, very cunning, and very adept at mind control. In my experience, they do not understand language at all. For instance, they do not understand English. Here's a subsection entitled, Devils Eat Red and Black Energies. Devils are beings of the colors of red and black. They eat the energy that is colored red and black. They can survive on that. They see the colors of our thoughts and emotions. And they have a way of attempting to redirect our thoughts and emotions so that our energy field becomes more red and more black. I have several images for you that illustrate red devils and black devils. And these come from church lore and church artwork, the Christian church, in ages past. I will have credits for all the image in this video at the end of the video, um, so I will just give you their titles and maybe their, their artists right now. Here's an image of a red devil standing, and another red devil looks like flying in the sky and with clerics all around. Can you see? The red devil has wings, and here's one flying. It looks like it has strange horns on its knees, and it's frequent that in church uh, artwork that devils will be depicted as having humanoid form. For instance, bipedal, two, two feet and two arms and a head, but then certain aspects of them will be different, different from, from what human beings are. They'll have wings, they might have horns, they might have uh, strange feet, for instance or other strange aspects that make it clear to the person viewing the artwork that they're devils and not people. This image is entitled, Saint Benedict of Nursia Exercises the Devil from Man Possessed. It was in a fresco by Giovanni Antonio Bazzi, long time ago in the 1500s. I have a description of this image of the red devils for you. It goes like this. White-robed, tonsured clerics and saints perform an exorcism. One cleric scourges a man's back with long twigs. Another, with hood up and beardless, with a pleasant smile, shoes the devil down the stairs from a building. The devil is about four feet tall, red and wiry. It has hold of the cleric's robe at the level of his groin and looks at him spitefully. The devil has horns on its kneecaps and claws on its fingers. It has short, red, webbed wings. 
St. Benedict of Nursia, it, this is a medal that I wear all the time, a wooden medal that I wear, because he uh, very skillfully devised a rhyme, uh, a very potent rhyme, to exercise devils. I think that's because so many people came to him with the problem of being obsessed or possessed by devils. In fact, in this image right here, you can see a man, uh, looks like striking another man to make a devil go away. And that man might be St. Benedict of Nursia, it's hard to say. From that, I might gather that in those days, in the 1500s, they thought that by um, causing pain to the a person's physical body, they might make the devil that was obsessing them, the entity attachment, go away under the assumption, I guess, that whatever it was that was attached to the person could also feel the pain that that person felt and that they might want to avoid that pain. That's my guess. I have one other picture in that regard. This is of a black devil. And here it is. See, in the center, a black devil, surrounded by clerics or monks, hard to say. And it looks, it looks a little bit like a man, but I would say a very unappealing man with very strange feet, and it looks like it has a tail, and yes, claws on its hands, and wings, strange webbed wings, and looks like the clerics are all standing around trying to figure out what to do about this. I see that one of them has tethered it around the neck with a pole and a tether on the end. I, I think the explanation of that might be that they have captured it or um, prevented it from causing harm there in that place where they are. And the, the title of the image is Saint Benedict Exercises a Devil from St. Benedict Stories by Spinello Aretino, um, 1387. You'll see the rest of the credits at the end of the video. Here is a description of the artwork of the Black Devil. White-robed, tonsured clerics and saints capture a four-foot black demon with small webbed wings. The demon is sitting on a more or less square slab of white rock. The demon has a snarling aspect and fangs on its lower jaws. It has four fingers on each hand and four toes on each foot. The fingers and toes end in claws. It has a short tail is somewhat hairy and has, it looks like, four horns which slant backwards and are only slightly curved on its head. Here's a subsection called Devils Cause Pain to Humans by Stroking Our Painful Thought Forms so that we become edible to them. The way that devils are able to obtain food from the human energy field has to do with stroking or enhancement of certain thought forms that are painful to us humans or cause pain in other people because we are thinking them. It is a kind of stroking or glomming or crossing of the electromagnetic lines of force that they manage to do and which we interpret as mind control because what happens is that we start to think very dark, very cruel, or very painful to ourselves thoughts. The next subsection is called Humans act out these painful thought forms as what the Christian Church calls sins. Sins are the cause of human suffering. In life, 
we start to act out what is known in the Christian Church as the seven cardinal or deadly sins, which are pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, and sloth. This Christian list of sins adds envy, gluttony, and sloth, or indolence, to the Hindu list of causes of suffering. Hindus also recognize attachment to the senses as a cause of suffering, suffering being, in their eyes, synonymous with soul ignorance. Here's an image for you that I found intriguing. It's by the artist Mikhail Rubel, and it's entitled The Girl Against the Background of Persian Carpet. Um, here's the image. It's, it's a young girl, uh, ornately adorned, sitting against a background of a Persian carpet. The thing that it, I found intriguing was the look on her face. It's somewhat haunted, somewhat obsessed, really sad. And so the question is, the question that this, that this interesting artist brings up is, why with all this wealth is this girl so unhappy? Why is that? And the answer to that question, whatever it is for you, has to do with the Christian Church's definition of the seven deadly sins. So I leave that to my reader to contemplate and to determine, uh, each in your own way, I hope, as did the artist Mikhail Rubel. Here's the last section entitled, How Sins Cause Us to Experience the Hell Worlds. Those colors of the aura, red and black, and those desire-filled thought forms called the cardinal sins, create a denseness in the aura or energy field because of the glomming of the electromagnetic lines that pulls us down into a world known in the major religions as the hell world. Actually, the hell world has many levels. And so, in the Hindu text, it's referred to as the hell worlds. I ask those of you that practice Satanism, I ask you to consider what you are doing in giving your thoughts and emotions and the actions in your lives over to a being that desires to live on and feast on your electromagnetic field energy, your life force, by turning you to a life of sin. And in concluding this section, I have for you two images The first is The Card Reader by Mikhail Rubel. You can see a woman dealing cards and a look on her face that I would call obsessed or possessed, which was a topic and a subject amply dealt with by Mikhail Rubel. There is such a thing as obsession or possession of human beings by devils. And it's important for each of us to learn the look that people have when they are obsessed or possessed. And so I'm offering you this image to just give uh, an initial understanding of what it may look like when you run across someone because when you do run across someone like this, there's a chance that the entity that's obsessing them or possessing them might leap onto your energy field preferentially. So it's good to stay away. Um, it's good to direct them to those that can exercise devils. And there are mighty few of those here on earth today, but there are some. Um, 
taking a look one more time at the way that the woman's face looks. You see a sort of a fixed stare. You see a kind of a silent scream that's not showing up on the, on the features. The features look relaxed, but within, through the eyes, you can see the anguish of the soul. Can you tell that? A very beautiful woman, but dwelling in deepest anguish, obsession or possession of the soul by a malignant entity. I have one other image for you today by George Frederick Watts. It's called, For He Had Great Possessions. And so here's a man. You can see he's, he has very fancy clothes on. And he's standing with his downcast head it turned towards the wall. There's something about his great wealth that's causing him to be despondent. And this, like those other pictures, has something to do with the Christian notion of the deadly sins. Why is it that great wealth can cause despondency? I leave that for you, the reader, to determine. That's all for now, dear ones. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.